Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we will unlock the book The Dance of Anger, A Woman's Guide to Changing the Patterns of Intimate Relationships. Speaking of anger, how is your state of mind? Do you experience anxiety, irritability, pain or the inability to communicate? Anger tells us that because of forces we can't control, we're not in control of our lives, that we've screwed everything up. It tells us that because we feel powerless, violated, misunderstood, and oppressed, we are helpless. We are no longer in control of ourselves, and we cannot remain independent. Therefore, we become alarmed when we feel angry, and see anger as an unstoppable force. But this is not true. How many times has anger dominated your communication in intimate relationships? How do you free yourself from anger? How can we recognize and solve problems when we are angry, face up to emotions, and clarify our own needs? The Dance of Anger is a book that explores the power behind anger and teaches us how to dance with it. Dr. Harriet Lerner, a respected psychologist in the United States, has more than 30 years of experience in psychotherapy and family therapy. She has helped millions of women get rid of anxiety and anger, find happiness in life and rebuild themselves. Her interest in women's mental health has led her to devote herself to psychological research on women's psychology and family therapy. She is the author of best-selling psychology books, such as Fear and Other Uninvited Guests, The Dance of Connection, The Dance of Intimacy, The Dance of Deception, and The Mother Dance. One of our other bookies covers her work, Why Won't You Apologize? Her classic book The Dance of Anger has been a bestseller in the U.S. for more than 30 years helping millions of readers learn how to understand anger and channel it into a driving force of self-renewal. In the book, Lerner argues that anger is a signal, and one worth listening to. She tells us that anger is a signal that we are being hurt, that our needs are not being understood or met, that our lives are spiraling out of control, that we are constantly giving into a relationship, and that we are losing ourselves. Therefore, we should recognize our emotions, express our anger properly, use the power of our emotions to reflect and grow, solve problems, and improve our relationships. In her book, Lerner presents many stories about anger drawn from her extensive case studies. She will show you the role of anger in various relationships in the anger dance floor, and through these stories you will begin to truly understand the power behind anger. Next, we will unlock this book in three parts. Part 1. Understand Anger Part 2, Anger in Different Scenarios Part 3, Change the Way You Deal with Anger Part 1, Understand Anger What is anger? Is it an uncontrollable roar, the silent treatment, or a violent fight? We have a lot of misconceptions about anger in our lives. We think it's sloppy, irrational, lacking in self-control, and demonstrates low emotional intelligence. We are so afraid of these evil names that when anger strikes, we see it as a monster. Expressing anger is even viewed differently depending on whether it is expressed by men or women. Men who express anger are considered vigorous, while women expressing anger carries the stigma of being shrews, bitches, unladylike, and castrators. While we also give women compliments, we create numerous barriers to their emotional expression. For all the anger and emotion that women freely express, we often fail to listen to their appeals objectively. So anger becomes a tool for denying women's emotional expression. One case in the book expresses this exact circumstance. A young female doctor presented an essay on abused women at a professional conference and gave a deeply engaging speech. However, upon her departure a prominent psychiatrist called the doctor an angry woman. Why would anyone come to that conclusion? Could the forceful tone of the female doctor's voice in this speech have caused people to immediately discount what she was saying? Because anger is a threat to others, it requires the object of the anger to take action to either defuse or counter the situation. Anger is a sign that both parties aren't on track, and this unpredictable change is now the inevitable result. But is anger justified if it causes trouble for others? Is anger ever an appropriate reaction? This is a false premise as Lerner tells us in her book.